So in this episode, we're going to talk about the history of Mars, where the name Mars even comes from, when the first sightings and when it was discovered to be a planet, and some recent rovers and landers that have gone on Mars all the way up to current day and what's going on now. So for the last 4,000 years, Mars has been depicted in paintings and pictures all throughout history. But where does the name Mars even come from? So Mars comes from the Roman god of war. Well, it's interesting to think that a planet would be called after a god of war, but it's also interesting because the Roman god of war, Mars, was actually more affiliated with the Greek god Ceres. And before the affiliation, Mars was actually the Roman god of agriculture which is a little bit of a throwback because now we're thinking about colonizing it. It's pretty interesting to see how those things work out that way. Now, in 1543, a man by the name of Copernicus theorized that Mars, like the Earth, orbited around the Sun, and that was when it was first theorized to be a planet. And then later, about a hundred years later, a man by the name of Huygens was the very first to actually draw pictures of Mars, as you see here. Now, his telescope wasn't nearly as good as what ours was, which is why the pictures aren't as good as what we see today, but it was the very first steps of what people thought Mars looked like. So now let's talk about more of a recent time frame. In the last hundred years, how has Mars been depicted? So in the 40s and 50s, Mars was actually depicted as an alien landscape. People really didn't know much about it because we hadn't sent anything there. So for the most part, a lot of people made stories, wrote books, fiction, about what it was like and possibly being attacked by Martians. But this all changed in 1965 when the Mariner 4 spacecraft did its first flyby of Mars. After the first pictures which you see here were taken, scientists called it a dead planet, both geologically and biologically, with little to no interest. The reason was because all of this excitement through fiction stories of Martians attacking or a landscape filled with aliens wasn't true and the initial reaction was actually pretty disappointing. Now, that didn't mean the ex exploration stopped. The Soviet Union actually sent two missions, Mars 2 and Mars 3, Mars 2 being the very first spacecraft to ever land on the surface of Mars. Now, after the Soviet Union were able to do that in 1971, NASA followed up with Viking 1 and 2, which were two landers that landed in 1976. These were really important because they took the very first panoramas of Mars from the Martian landscape. As you see here, it's actually very interesting. This made people more interested in Mars rather than just thinking it's a dead planet. We also learned from this mission that Mars' sky isn't blue like ours. Like It was theorized to be very similar to Earth in its atmosphere, but actually it was very different. After the Viking 1 and 2 spacecraft, there was a 20-year hiatus where no mission landed on the surface of Mars. But this all ended with Pathfinder and Sojourner. So Pathfinder was a main hub that measured the weather, temperature, pressure, all this about the Martian atmosphere. And Sojourner was a car that was connected by a tether to Pathfinder. And what, it was able to, what Sojourner was able to do was act like an RC car almost that roamed across the surface of Mars and took pictures and did basic sampling of the Martian surface. This was important because it showed different locations on the Martian surface actually had different components, rock components. And because of this, in 2004, there was the Mars Exploration Rover mission, which focused on the Spirit and Opportunity rovers and their ability to scour the vast Martian landscape. These rovers were about the size of the uh, about the size of a golf cart to put that into perspective. And the next step from here was in 2012 when the Curiosity rover landed on Mars. And this rover is about the size of a small car. So as we can see, as time gets closer and closer to modern time, these rovers are getting much bigger and much more advanced. Since these rovers are getting more and more advanced, I'm going to take a couple other episodes to explain the Spirit, Opportunity, and Curiosity rovers, but for now, that takes us all the way up to modern day Mars, and what's going on in, on the surface of Mars, as well as what the history of Mars looked like, and how the naming convention happened. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time to learn more about the Spirit and Opportunity rovers.